Hey, what up? Welcome back to another quick Flutter tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to create this frosted glass effect that you can put into your apps. I've been playing around with this aesthetic for a few days and I think it looks pretty good. And it's also really easy to implement. So let me show you how to do this by jumping into the code. So I've created a new Flutter project. I just called it glass tutorial. And I've also got an image here. You don't necessarily need an image to use this glass effect, but it looks pretty good when you have a background behind it. So grab any image you want and let's create a new folder in our project called images and just drag your background into this folder. Cool, so let's open this up and in the project before we do anything, we should go to the pubspec.yaml to tell the project that we're going to import an image. So library slash images is where I imported it. Cool, so save it and let's close this and as usual, I'm just going to delete everything below the main function so that I can start this from scratch. So let's create the material app and I'm going to create a new file called homepage. And this homepage is going to be where our scaffold is. Cool. So if you save this, this should just be a blank app and this is where we're going to start. So in the scaffold, the first thing is in the body, I'm going to create a container and we're going to place the image at the background. So in the decoration, let's specify where we placed the image. So library slash images slash background.jpg is where my image is. And if I save it, most likely the aspect ratio is just going to fit the entire image in. So what I'm going to do is go to the fit option and I'm going to change this to boxfit.cover. So this will just stretch it out and fill out the rest of the space. And now in the child is where we're going to place the glass box. And so just to make our code nice and clean, I'm going to create a new file and let's call it glassbox.dart. And let's create it in this file so that we can reuse this widget. Cool. So just for starters, let's just specify a width and a height of 200 just so that we can see what's going on. And let's give it a white color. So now we can come back to our homepage and import what we just created. And if you save this, it's actually going to fill up the entire screen. So what you're going to do is let's just wrap this glass box in a center widget. Cool. So there's our little white box there. Now for the child of this container, I'm going to be using a stack, which I made a separate tutorial covering the stack widget by itself. So check that out if you need, but essentially it allows you to visually stack different widgets on top of each other. So in the children of the stack, what we're going to do is I'm going to first create a blur effect and then a gradient effect. And then on top of that, we're going to have a child. So these two effects should give us this glass feel. So just starting with a blur effect, we're going to be using something called a backdrop filter. And if you look at the image filter options, there's one for blur and that's what we're going to use. And inside this blur, there's actually two things we can specify. So the Sigma X and Sigma Y. And essentially what this is, is just the level of blur that we want to do. So just to show you how this works, let's just say five for each of them. And let's just also just give a blank container as a child. And you can see if you save this, our entire screen is blurred out by a strength of five. And the reason why we have both an X and a Y option is if I just show you, say, like if I say zero, zero, then obviously there's no blurs. Let's leave one of them zero and the other one to 10. So you can see that for the Sigma X, it blurs it, but sort of horizontally, right? And similarly, if I say Sigma X is zero and Sigma Y is 10, then you get a blur, but in a sort of vertical direction. Right. So for us, if you just want a general blur, then just make it the same number. And the higher the number, obviously, the stronger the blur is going to be. OK, cool. Now, the thing is, we don't want to blur the entire screen. We just want to blur this container. So just wrap this container in a clip R rect just to clip it. And we can actually add an extra R, make it a clip around rectangle, which lets us specify this border radius. And this is a widget I use all the time. It essentially just rounds the corners, as you can see there. So let's specify this to be, say, 20. And so that's the blur part of it done. Now let's go to the gradient. Now the reason we want a gradient is because we want to sort of simulate a light shining from the top left corner. 
right, to make it a bit more realistic. So in the container for the decoration, we're going to specify this gradient to be a linear gradient. So we want the gradient to begin at the top left and end at the bottom right. And let's also specify the color of this gradient. So just as an example, if I say white and pink, then you can see how that gradient is behaving. Now, instead of using a solid white color, we can specify this white with opacity to be a certain strength. Let's say 0.5 and the bottom one, let's say like 0.1. So just to quickly go over what these numbers mean. If you have a opacity of one, then it's going to be a solid white color, whereas a opacity of zero is going to be not white at all. So you can choose a number between zero and one, say like 0 0.4 and let's say 0 0.1, and you can have this sort of gradient effect going on. And so with these individual numbers, this is clearly up to your preference on how you want this to look. But I think we can make this blur a little bit smaller, a bit lighter of a blur. And one other thing is we want to add a border here. So if I just add a solid white border, you can see there's a bit of border there. And actually we should specify this border radius as well to match what we had above. Cool, so there's a solid white border, but that's making it not look as realistic. So same thing as before, let's make this a opacity strength of say 0 0.2. Yeah, just makes it a touch more realistic. And since we want this border radius to be the same for both of these widgets, what I'm going to do is just create this global variable up here. Just make it border radius. And so replace these. And if you need to do any changes, then you can just change this overall border radius so that everything changes together. Cool. So this is how you get the look of the glass morphism feel. Now, just to finish off, I'm just going to show you how you can actually use this into your apps. So the last thing to specify here is the child. So if I just say, for example, a text widget just saying hello, you can see it up in the corner. And then with this child, you can do whatever you want to position it however you like. So for us to be able to use this uh, in a nice clean way in our apps, let's come up to the top here and let's create some constructors. So what I want to do is I want to know the height, the width and the child for this glass box. So you can see here we sort of hard coded it to be 200. But instead of that, we can just make this constructor. And let's require all three parameters here. And so this way we can reuse this code and create multiple glass boxes. So if you come back to the home page, you can see there's a red squiggle under the glass box because now we can specify these individual properties. So the height, now we can just say, all right, well, 250 and whatever number we like. And the child, we can easily say text widget. And actually the height and width should be a double. So let's just put a 0 .0, 0, 0.0, and there it is. Cool, and with the particular child, if you need to change anything about it, you can come back to the glass box file and center it or add padding, whatever you like to do. Cool, so this sort of programming is called object-oriented programming, which you should be doing. And just the last thing I want to touch on before I let you go is right now we have this glass box to be centered. And if I get rid of this centered box, it kind of screws up the entire thing. So what you want to do is specify this alignment. And I really like this alignment property because it requires us to give it an X and a Y. And using these numbers, you can position the glass box wherever you want. So instead of just always being in the center, which if you do want it to be in the center, it would be zero, zero. But you can control these X and Y positions to whatever you like. And if you're not familiar with how this alignment works, negative one, negative one is in the top left. And positive one, positive one is on the bottom right. So using this X and Y axis, you can sort of position this glass box wherever you like. And as I mentioned before, zero, zero is just in the center. Awesome, that's it for today. Hopefully that was easy to understand. Play around with it and let me know if you have any questions about it. But other than that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Laters!